Uh, what does StubHub do, and how do you make money? Sure, so StubHub, very simple concept. Um, instead of having people go to a ticket broker or just sell the tickets um, through some third party, um, you can sell direct to another fan, and we'd have an exchange much like the stock market, and we'd take care of payment and delivery. So we guarantee that the buyer is going to get the ticket they wanted on time for the event. We guarantee the seller is going to get paid. It's very, very simple. Um, cut out the broker and all that guessing, and you can pick your ticket. Um, in, in return for doing that, there's 25% worth of fees to the buyer and the seller, typically 10% to the buyer, 15% to the seller. So there's a couple advantages um, in terms of the structure of this business model. Uh, one is that we took no inventory. So that was a very, very good thing. You take no inventory, you get commissions, and it means you get float or you know, negative working capital. I collect the money up front before I paid out to people. So I have a ton of payables, not receivables. I hold the money and then I pay people. That's always a good thing. Much better than, than uh, the other way around. So um, that was uh, you know, very advantageous to it. And obviously, you, you know, it's a model that could scale in a very big market. It's, uh, it's interesting to hear these things repeat. You know, I was talking to Paul Orflew, who founded Kinko's. He says the dirtiest word in business is inventory. So if you can find businesses that minimize it or have no inventory. So you have negative working capital as long as you're growing. Yeah, that's sort of unheard of in most businesses. So not only was, was the business attractive because you saw the market was fragmented, inefficient, unsophisticated players, all that, but the model stood out to you as attractive. Yeah, it made sense. I mean, again, fundamentally as a business made sense. So I think particularly in environments where you know, things are sort of crazy and you have you know, people valuing things in a crazy way, that's actually a great opportunity if you're, you, know, you can sell. I, I sort of look at it as like if there's a real estate boom, um, it's great to be in real estate, but the best position is to own beachfront property. If you own good real estate, you can have boom and bust, but your real estate's going to throw off cash. You have great real estate. If, however, you just are trying to chase a boom and you've bought a piece of property which is probably not beachfront, then you need to make sure you get out before the cycle turns, which it will. So this was an example of the business actually worked. So this wasn't like just trying to hype something up and flip it. Um, we knew the business worked. We knew it would generate cash. And it happened to be in an attractive area that people would value highly.